Here's a question I've been sent in by a viewer, which is to prove the inequality 5 to the n plus 9 is less than 6 to the n, and prove it by mathematical induction. Now probably the reason why people have difficulty with it is that when you have a look at it, um, this 5 to the n and this 6 to the n, they present some issues with us. Um, because if it was, say, 5 times n and 6 times n, it'd be easy to simplify these two. They'd be able to interact with each other quite easily. But because the n is up in the index, this 5 and this 6, because they're different bases, they don't play nicely together. We've got to be a little more um, tricky with how we prove it. Okay, So how does a mathematical induction begin? First, you have to test for the first allowable value and make sure the inequality actually does work. Now, one of the interesting things, I haven't been given a domain with this question, um, you know, what values of n we have to prove it for. But if you just have a think, you know, it doesn't work for all of them. For instance, n to the power, if n was 0, right? What would be here on the left-hand side? Will it be uh, 5 to the power of 0, which is 1? So it would be 1 plus 9. So the left-hand side would be 10. And the right-hand side would be 6 to the power of 0, which is 1. 10 less than 1. Well, that's not true. Um, and even if you put in the next value, so if you start at the positive integers, if n were 1, you'd get 5 here and 6 here. So your left-hand side is going to be 14. Your right hand side is going to be 6. Well, 14 isn't less than 6 either. Okay, So I'm assuming that for this question, the domain we've been given is um, n is going to be uh, greater than or equal to 2. As you'll see in a second, 2 does work. Okay, So let's give this a spin, shall we? I'm going to test for n equals 2. My left hand side, what's it going to be equal to? 5 squared plus 9. That's 25 plus 9, which is 34. The right hand side is 6 squared, so that's 36. So sure enough, the left hand side is less than <coughs> the right hand side in this case. Okay, Therefore, the inequality holds. It's true for n equals 2, which is what we're thinking is our first allowable value. Okay. So what's the next step in a mathematical induction proof? It's the, um, it's the important step for uh, a proof by mathematical induction. It's the um, inductive hypothesis or the assumption, okay? Um, namely that the statement is true for some arbitrary value of n that um, fits the rules that we know so far. Um, so we'll call that value k, and we're proving this for k being a, um, uh, an integer, but not just any integer, um, it has to be greater than or equal to 2, just like n does, okay? Right, now what does it look like? the statement look like? We'll simply do the substitution, um, stick in k's wherever you see n's, and this is what we're assuming to be true, okay? So the third step is now, on, on this assumption, I want to prove that the statement is true for the next value along. This is where our work is going to begin. Um, so I'm going to, I want to tr prove that it's true for n equals k plus 1. Okay. Um, now, what does that look like? Um, I need to prove that um, if I put in k plus 1 instead of k, I'll have this plus 9, and that's going to be a k plus 1 over there as well. Okay. So now, this is actually what I'm after, and this is where um, all of our algebra is going to come in. This is what I want to prove. Okay. Now, with uh, inequality proofs, often the easiest place to start is actually with the assumption, okay? And we're going to try and take this and twist and turn it so that we can turn it into something like this or something equivalent to it, okay? And that equivalence, by the way, is going to be crucial later on. So let's start with this line, um, the assumption, by assumption, um, 5 to the k plus 9 is less than 6 to the k. All right, now, what can I do with this in order to make it look like or look as close as possible to what I'm trying to prove, okay? Well, it looks to me like the, the simplest difference is that uh, on the right-hand side, what's the difference? I've got a 6 to the k plus 1 here. That's what I'm trying to get to. And here I have 6 to the k. Right, well, the difference is just a factor of 6, right? And to see that, you've just got to remember your index laws, that 6 to the k plus 1 is really a way of writing 6 to the k multiplied by 6 to the 1, which of course is just 6, okay? So for me, thinking about, I mean, there's many ways to do this, but the quickest way to start making this look like what I'm required to prove is just to multiply everything through by 6, okay? So let's give that a go. I've got a 6 over here, 
multiply everything, and then I'll put a 6 over here. Okay, now, what do we got now? Uh, the right-hand side, if I simplify that a little more, that looks exactly like what we want. Okay, so that's very promising, okay? What do I have on the left-hand side? Well, remember what I'm trying to get is a 5 to the k plus 1. 5 to the k plus 1. Now, in just the same way that I saw that 6 to the k plus 1 is 6 to the k times 6, this is 5 to the k times 5, right? Um, to the power of 1. So how can I get that out of what I've got here? I'm not multiplying by 5. And the answer is I'm multiplying by something better than 5. I'm multiplying by 6, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite that 6 as a 5 plus 1. Now, why am I going to rewrite it as 5 plus 1? Because I want to multiply that 5 to the k plus 1, right? So we've got 5 to the k plus 1 outside of 5 to the k plus 9, okay? Now, when I expand this left-hand side, and now I'm just looking exclusively at the left-hand side because the right-hand side is exactly how I want it, right? What am I going to have? Well, let's do the 5 first. So I've got 5 times 5 to the k, and then 5 times 9 is 45, right? Then I've got one lot of 5 to the k, and I've got a 9, okay? That's less than or equal to, less than, sorry, 6 to the k plus 1. Okay, now, ordinarily, I'd, I'd put this 45 and this 9 together, but for now, I'm going to leave them, and you'll see why later I don't need to um, simplify them together. Now, this 5 times 5 to the k, there is the 5 to the k plus 1 that I was after, right? Uh, I'm going to swap these two numbers around because if you can see, I want the 5 times to the, k, to the power of k plus 1 and the 9 to be together because in my what I'm required to prove, that's what I've got, right? So I'm going to have 5 to the k plus 1 plus 9. And then I have these other two terms, these extra terms, right? So just to show that they're a bit extra, I'm going to put them in brackets here. Okay, 6 to the k plus 1. Right, now, let's think about this. You, here's where the thought is required and where uh, it, this is not the same as, say, solving an equation uh, or proving an equation to be true, right? Um, the difference is that what I have here is not exactly the same as what I'm required to prove, okay? I was, you might be expecting to get that exactly on the left-hand side, but I don't have that exactly. I've got this plus other stuff, okay? But can you see that that's actually not a problem for us, right? Because what I've proved is that this right-hand side, 6 to the k plus 1, is this is greater than, if you're thinking about it, you know, I'm going from this side to that side. This number is bigger than these two numbers together, right? This number and this number, okay? Added together. Uh, and remember that 5 to the k is positive, right? So none of these numbers are actually negative, yeah? So I can say, since 6 to the k plus 1, this side is greater than this side, all of it, I can say that it's greater than just a part of it, right? I can say that it's greater than just that on its own, without this extra bit, um, since 5 to the k plus 45, that must be positive, right? Because k must be positive. So just in case you, you missed what that step is about, right? It's a little bit like this. Suppose we were trying to prove that um, <clears throat> uh, five, uh, 3 is less than 5, okay? And what we eventually got to, right, was that uh, 4 is less than 5. If we, can, if we can prove that, well, that's 3 plus 1 is less than 5. And that's not the same as what we're trying to prove, but it's better, right? Because 1's positive. So if uh, 3 plus 1 is less than 5, then surely 3 is less than 5. So that's what I've done here. Um, I've eliminated this part. I can, I can just, well, not really eliminate it. I just disregard it because it doesn't change the direction of the inequality. Uh, in fact, it just makes it more obvious that um, this number is bigger than this number, which is even bigger than this number, right? So this is what I was setting out to prove. This implies, or this means that, the statement is true for n equals k plus 1. Okay, so what have I done? I, I, I tested for the first value, which was 2, right? That's what we did up here. And I showed that, that it was actually the case. Then I said, well, let's just assume this is true. I don't know if it is, okay? But we just assumed it. But on the basis of that assumption, we proved this statement, okay? Now, here's the thing. Since I've proved it for 2, right, this statement would be true if I put 2s in there. 
but this statement is true if this one is true. And so if this is true for two, it'd be true for three. If it's true for three, I could, it's proof, true for four, and, and so on, right? So therefore, and um, different different places, different schools, universities will uh, word their conclusion a little bit differently. But, um, you know, you might just say, by the principle of mass mathematical induction, the statement is true for um, your first value, right? Which we said was two. And every subsequent one, right? Which is uh, all we needed to prove. That's it. That's the proof.